All right, so this is one of our new resident birds. Um, and anytime we get a new bird, um, they get an intake exam to make sure that they're healthy and everything looks good. We take care of any maintenance, um, like coping the beak, and we can talk about in a minute what that is. Um, so first thing first, we wrap them up like a burrito <laughs> and put them on a scale so we can get their weight. <laughs> You'll notice that Kelsey is holding their feet. Um, that is their main weapon. Um, and so we always make sure we have the feet secure um, to keep the handlers safe. So what Matthias is doing is putting some alcohol on the feathers of the chest of the bird. Um, we can't put water on it because their feathers keep them waterproof so the water would just pool. So we put alcohol on it um, so that we can spread the feathers and what he's looking at um, is the keel. Matthias, you want to talk about what the keel is? Keel, yeah. So the keel bone right here is what flight muscles attach to. And the amount of flight muscle will give you a kind of a quick view into how healthy a bird is. If somebody's chronically injured or sick or weak, they're going to have very little flight muscle. This bird has a, quite a bit of flight muscle. In fact, it's kind of even with the keel surface. It's almost flat across. So we would grade that as a four, give or take, out of a scale of one to five. One being very skinny, five being a bit on the overweight side. I'm going to show you. We have this chart up here in the hospital. Um, so that you can better gauge what a keel would feel like. So you can kind of see one is very emaciated with the bone sticking out, and then it gradually goes up to a five, which you can't really even see the bone, and it's kind of overtaken by either muscle or fat. So this is a Harris's hawk, which is a non-native species of hawk. Um, you would find them out west. I think we're in shock. We're not reacting. <laughs> Got light reflex. So just like when you go to the doctor, shine a light in your eye to make sure you have pupillary reflex, and we do the same with our birds. Looking in her nares, which is a bird's nostrils. Finding the ears. Nice and clean. So usually to find a bird's ears, you find the, the, uh, is it in line with the mouth? And then, yeah. Yep, and then behind and below the eye. Nice and clean there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like you've had some, uh, beak issues before. Look how narrow the tongue is at the tip. Mm. Like she's bitten it before. Mm but not recently. Nice mouth. All right, I'm doing it inside the eye real quick. Yep. So now we'll do an <coughs> internal eye check, which requires lights going off. Um, and here we'll look back into the eye to make sure that everything with the retina is healthy. As birds age, they can, um, much like with people, they can have retinal changes, and they can get things like cataracts. Nice eye. Looks good. No injuries, no sign of any trauma or disease inside. <clears throat> During the exam, once we're done uh, looking at everything on the head, we often cover their head with a towel, um, kind of like putting blinders on a horse, 
Um, it keeps them nice and calm for the rest of the exam so they can check out the rest of the body. Good, healthy tissue. So Matthias is going to expose a vein so that he can take some blood. And we get baseline blood numbers on our birds on intake so that if they ever do get sick, um, we can take their blood and compare it, um, things like white blood count, um, and make sure we know exactly what's going on. We'll get the blood once she is out under anesthesia oh, yeah. in a minute. It'd be a lot easier, safer for everybody. Let's go check the leg for any signs of injuries. Everything's moving right. Nice feet. Look at that, nice and rough. So, con or unlike our skin, that we like to be nice and smooth, we like our birds to have rough and bumpy skin. And if at any point we see that our birds are starting to get smooth skin, a lot of times we can look at the perching that they're on um, and change things up so that their skin can go back to that nice, rough, bumpy. Check out the tail. Hmm. Make sure all the tail feathers are intact. This one's... Yeah, it's still good. It's in blood. Looks good. It's a big tail. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, wing number two. Ooh. Matthias, when do they molt their feathers? So it varies a little bit with species, but generally between, let's say, April and October, for about a six month window every year, they would molt some of their primaries and secondaries and some of their tail feathers and some of their body feathers. So not the entire set, but just a few selected feathers. So they can still fly. They can still fly while it's happening. And do they molt, molt symmetrically on their wings? They usually do, or very close to symmetrically. So you might see one or two flight feathers on each wing that are really short and maybe one or two more that are kind of intermediate in length and they just start dropping them one after the other in a certain order and then come fall they'll stop molting and then following spring they'll pick up where they left off continue that molt until everything's been replaced and they start over i think she grabbed herself mm. actually it's it's not even fresh hmm not fresh blood. Okay, this feels good. Yeah, back to you, please. Thank you. All right. So far, so good. All right. Thank you. It's cool.